Hi, and welcome to Learning Python by Building a, a Rock, Paper, Scissors Game. My name is Scott Barto, and uh, this, this class is offered to you by the Clifton Park Half Moon Library. It's a, uh, a single class uh, just to teach you some of the fundamentals of Python uh, by uh, building a, a, a rock, paper, scissors game. And um, for those of you that are new to Python, um, if you haven't already installed Python on your machine, uh, what you need to do is you need to go out to python.org and select uh, the latest and greatest Python version 3 plus. So uh, three point, um, I've got 3.61 loaded on my machine, but I think it's up to 3.7 or 3.8. Um, it's a simple download. Once you download it onto your machine, you will, um, it will come with the, if you look to the right on my screen, you'll see that I have uh, the Python shell. And your download will include the Python shell. And the way to go into, um, to create a, a brand new edit, text editor session in idle, you would click on file in the Python shell. So if you look off to the right of my screen, you would click on file and then new file. Once you click on new file, it will open up a, um, a idle, I-D-L-E, test editor session. So you can enter your um, entire program into this, this idle session, and you'll also be able to, uh, to save it and run it. So um, that's how I got uh, my screen to look the way it looks right now. So I have the Python shell, the command line for Python on the right, and I have my idle session uh, ready to enter a brand new program on the left. So uh, what we're going to be learning today is that um, we're going to be creating a rock, paper, scissors game. And um, I'm assuming that most everybody knows what rock, paper, scissors is. Um, so uh, let's say rock, um, paper beats rock, rock beats scissors, and scissors beats paper. So uh, the way we're going to set up this game is you're going to be, uh, you will be one player and you will be playing against the computer. And the computer is, you're going to be using a random number generator, which is used uh, exclusively in, uh, in computer games, video games. And so the computer will um, generate a choice, rock, paper, or scissor, and you will, so you will enter in a choice of rock, paper, or scissor, and the, um, our program will determine who wins, and it will announce who wins that round, and it will keep a, uh, a tally of number of uh, the players wins and the number of computer wins. Uh, you will be able to play the game. You'll be able to select yes or no, whether you want to continue playing uh, the game, or you, if, you, if you select yes, you'll, you'll go on and, and do another round. If you select no, then the computer will, will uh, exit out of the game. All right, and some of the, some of the, um, the Python concepts that we're going to be using in this game today are uh, conditionals, which are if, um, if, else, if, and else. Uh, also, we're going to be using a while loop. And we'll be also using the random number generator. So to get things started, off to the left in my idle session, uh, the first thing I have to do is I have to import uh, random, the random library. Import random, All right? And that will import the whole random number generator library. Uh, so we can use all the functions and all the, all the good things that come from that library. Um, next, what we want to do is we want to say, um, let's say, we're going to say, we're going to create an input statement. And we're going to ask the player 
I'm going to say, welcome. You know, this is a string, so I surrounded it with double quotes. Welcome to rock um, a paper, some scissors, scissors, let's see, I, S O R S, um, rock, paper, scissors, estimation point. And then we'll have press enter to start. And double quotes. And then we'll close the input statement in, in Python, the command is input. And then in parentheses, you ask a question or you, you tell the person what to do, what the player to do. And what we're telling, we're, we're giving you a welcome, welcome to the rock, paper, scissors game. And we're saying, press enter to start the game. Right. And enter. Okay. So. I'll, I'll expand my test editor session so you can see things a little bit better. Wait, and there we are. Okay, so that's our first input statement. Then we're gonna do a Python print. So print, parentheses, parentheses. And what that will do is it'll print a line. So we'll have our welcome, asking the person to enter Enter uh, uh, press start enter to start, and then we'll have a print line. And now we're going to set up a couple of variables in Python. Variables um, start with a letter, and they can contain letters, numbers, or the special character underscore. But no other special characters, no spaces, and those are the rules for Python variable names. So we're gonna create a couple of variable names. We're gonna create user wins equal, and we're gonna initiate this variable to a zero. And enter. And next we're gonna have computer wins. Computer wins. And that is set to zero. So the game is just beginning. We create two variables, user underscore wins and computer underscore wins. And we give them both a, uh, we initialize both variables with a value of zero, because we're both starting off with zero. Next, we're going to create a list in Python. And the way to do that is to create the list name. And this list is going to be called choices. And it's going to equal. And then within square brackets in Python, we are going to enter the three choices. So it's going to be rock, comma. So we use commas to concatenate in Python our, um, our, uh, our list items. So the first item is rock, and that's a string. So it's surrounded with double quotes. Then you have a comma. Then the next item. And it's going to be paper, double quotes, and the final item is going to be scissors, quotes, and then you close it out with a square bracket. All right, so that's our list. And the thing to understand with lists is that, uh, so, so for our list, uh, which is called choices, we have three items. So. If we were to look at the length of this list, it would tell us it would return the number of three because there are three items in it. So that's the length of the list. But the the index for a list. So for the first item, the index you would normally think that rock the first item of the list would have an index of one. Well, it doesn't. It starts with an index of zero. So rock has an index of zero, paper has an index of one, and scissors has an index of two. And that's important to know um, just uh, a little later on. Um, actually, we're coming up to it. So um, now we're going to enter a while loop, all right? So this whole game is going to be based on while true. Now, true is a Boolean. Right, so so we have 
we have strings, we have numbers, we have booleans. Booleans are simply, uh, uh, it's a data type that is either true or false. In Python, the word true is spelled with a capital T and lowercase r-u-e, and false is spelled with a capital F and lowercase a-l-s-e. So what we're going to do is we're going to do while, so the command, the Python command is while, and notice when I enter it, it turns orange, right? Just like uh, our first line of the program, when I entered import, that turned orange also. So, so while and import are both commands, Python commands. And so we're saying while true. And then you have, a, have to um, end the while loop with a colon. All right, so as long as, as long as this is true, then we want to keep on playing the game. Once it becomes false, we'll get out of our, it'll exit out of the while loop, all right? So, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a random index, all right? Here's where we're calling on the random library. So we do random underscore index. So this is a variable. Remember variable names in Python have to start with a letter and they can contain letters, numbers, and underscore. So in this variable name, we're using the underscore as a special character. So we have random underscore index space equals, and here's where we're gonna, use, we're gonna call on the random library, so random dot, and then from the random library, we're gonna use the rand int. So random int, int for integer, and then in parentheses, we're going to do a zero comma two in parentheses. All right, so um, so we've got the random library, and we're calling the rand int um, function or method that um, has the parameters of zero and two, or values of zero and two. So zero represents the the starting position or index. And um, comma two, two represents the ending position. All right. So if you if you look up in our choices list, a couple lines above in our program. So we want to randomly choose the index either zero. We want to start with zero. So we'll start with the index of zero, which is the item rock. And we want to go all the way. We want to um, go to the uh, to the last index that we're going to be using is two. And so paper is one and scissors is two. That way, the computer is going to be randomly choose either index zero, one, or two, which means they're choosing either rock, paper, or scissors. <clears throat> and they're going to load that value into the random underscore index variable that we created out here that I'm highlighting right now, all right? So that's how we're gonna be using the random library. And as a follow-up, we'll say CPU or computer choice, all right? So the CPU underscore choice is a variable name and that's gonna equal choices, right? So choices is our list name, so here, this might be a little confusing. So choices is the list name that we, we created up here, a couple of lines above, right? So this variable down here, CPU underscore choice, is going to be equal to the name of the list, which is choices, and then we're gonna use a square bracket, and what we'll do next is we're going to um, put inside the square brackets. We're going to put the very the value of the variable random underscore index, which we have right above. Oops, I did a curly bracket. And you have to close it out with a square bracket. All right. So we're calling on our choices. 
scrolling on the choices, the name of the list we created. And then the square brackets, instead of having a number, uh, a number zero, one, or two, uh, we're letting, on the line above, we're letting the, the, the computer randomly pick the index of zero, one, or two. All right, and that's when the, when the computer randomly picks that value, it dumps it into the variable that we created here, random underscore index. And that's how we're using random the value of random underscore index down here on the next line inside the square brackets, all right? And so that's how we're gonna get our random choice from the, um, for the computer, all right? The player, the human, is going to um, be asked to choose rock, paper, scissors. And then uh, once they choose it, then the computer will randomly choose. And they will put that value of their choice into CPU underscore choice. And let's see. And so what we should do is, uh, why don't we add a comment here? So right after the while loop statement, uh, the way to add a comment in Python is with a hashtag or a pound sign. And you can see when I entered hashtag, it uh, is red. So these are just for notes. They're just to allow you to read your program better. And uh, or for somebody else who's, who's uh, looking at your program, they'll uh, be able to understand it much quicker. And so what I'm gonna say, um, uh, I'm gonna say random, random computer choice of uh, paper or scissors or scissors. All right. Okay. So that's that's where random where the computer is gonna randomly choose one of those three choices. All right. Okay, so next, next we're going to say the user choice, user underscore choice equals, and this is going to be an input statement. So input, and then a parenthesis, and then the quotes. Here you have to ask your question, or ask the user to do something. So we're going to say rock. Underscore paper, underscore or scissors. And put a question mark, double quote, and then a uh, closing parenthesis. Now, what, what we're going to do next is we're going to do dot lower parenthesis, parenthesis. All right. And what's that? What this is doing is we're creating a variable called user underscore choice. And whatever the user inputs, rock, paper, or scissors, or whatever, they should put, uh, they should put the word mountain or bike. And um, we're going to be handling invalid choices uh, just uh, 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 a few lines down. So. Um, so we're saying input, we're telling the user, hey, rock, either either enter rock, paper, or scissors. And then um, after we close out the input statement with a parenthesis, we have dot, and then the, the method lower, parenthesis, parenthesis, because we're not passing any, um, any values. So we're calling this method lower. And what it's saying is, no matter what, somebody enters into the input they should do they should enter rock all capitals or rock uh, uh, uh all lowercase or or ro being uppercase and ck being lowercase just just to um to correct uh the users from entering a choice a valid choice uh with the wrong case or with different cases so 
this covers everything. So what what would be the value that would be put into the user underscore choice variable will be in lowercase. So rocks will turn out lowercase, paper will turn out lowercase, scissors will turn out lowercase. Now, if they spell the word wrong, if they spell rock with R-O-C-K-K-E, um, then that that would be that value would be put into user underscore choice, the variable. And um, it would be invalid because it's spelled wrong. All right. But it would be placed, the value would be placed in user underscore choice as lowercase. All right. So that's our user choice. And the line below is going to be using a, um, another while loop. All right. And so while user, and this is going to change, check that user choice entered a valid, valid option. So user choice, so it, while the, the variable user underscore choice uh, is not in choices, all right? So not in, so that, that command not in, notice it, it's orange, just like the while loop command is orange. So while, while, while user underscore choice is not in choices. Now choices, remember, is the name of the list that we created up here. So if it's not lowercase rock, lowercase paper, or lowercase scissors, then they enter something incorrectly. And you have to close out a while loop with a colon, hit enter, and it automatically indents inside this while loop. So if the user enters something that's not in the choices list, rock, paper, or scissors, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to give them another chance. So we'll say user underscore choice, underscore choice, will equal input, parenthesis, and we'll ask it again. Or we'll, we'll tell them that that wasn't valid. That is not a valid choice, period. Please try again. period, and we'll close it out with a double quote, close it out with a parenthesis, and once again, the user is going to be given the chance to give, send a message that says that that is not a valid choice, please try again, and, when it says, and then the user has to enter a, a rock, paper, or scissors again, all right? So dot lower parenthesis, parenthesis, and that's it, all right? So, oops, uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and the second time through, if they enter another invalid choice, like soup, instead of rock, paper, or scissors, it's just gonna keep on going up here and, and checking the while loop until they enter a valid choice, all right? So that's, we'll be stuck in a loop until they enter a valid choice. Um, so the while, um, if I entered soup, it would come back up here to the while mm -hmm. statement. It would say, okay, this user, does the value of user underscore choice, is that in the choices list? Nope, it's still not in it. So it would come down to this line inside the while loop and it would say, hey, that's not a valid choice. Please try again and again and again until you finally get it. <laughs> so when they finally enter a rock, paper, or scissors choice, it would break out of this loop. It would check the while loop that says, hey, is it in the choices list? Yes, it is. So we can get out of the loop and finally move on. So um, just like above, I'm going to I'm going to um, add a comment here. All right, so here is the Player's choice of rock, paper, or scissors. All right. Okay, so we have a computer choice, we have a player's choice. Now what? 
Okay. So now let's do uh, let's do a few print statements. Sorry. So print. What? And double quotes. Oops. Print. And in parentheses, we're gonna whatever you put in the parentheses after the print command is what is going to be printed out to the screen. And so we're going to say, hey, your choice, comma, space, and we'll do double quotes, and then a comma to concatenate it. And then we want to print out the value of user, the user choice variable, right? So that's going to be, and then close it out with a parenthesis. So that, that will print the words, your choice, comma, space, and then the value that the player chose, which will be either rock, paper, or scissors. All right, so we're telling the, um, we're printing out to the screen what choices were chosen. So then on the next line, we'll say computer choice, Comma and the computer choice is CP. Oops. Here. The computer choice is going to be back up here. CPU underscore choice. CPU underscore choice. Close it out with a parenthesis. Hit enter. And then we're going to do just a print line. So print, parenthesis, parenthesis, hit enter. Okay. All right. Now let's see, why don't we try this now? Okay, so the way to run your program is you want to go um, up to the command line in your idle session. And I'm going to make this a little bit shorter so we can see our Python shell because the, uh, the results are going to be over, off to the right of my screen in the Python shell in the command line. All right, so. Uh, looking back on the left side of my screen in the idle test editor session, we want to go up to the toolbar and we want to click on run. And then the third option, run module, which means it's going to run the module that's, um, that we're on right now. Uh, then a pop-up window will come and says save before run or check. So you click OK. And the first time through, we actually had to save it to a file. So when I click OK, it'll bring up File Explorer in Windows. I'm using a Windows machine, so uh, it'll be a little bit different, maybe on a, um, on, definitely on a Mac. All right, so I'm going to save this. So go to Windows and Library. Perhaps here, and we're going to create a new. Uh, New little folder. Uh, so new folder, and this is uh, but uh, all right. That's my folder now, Python. And I'll click on that, so it's empty. Now down here, um, the save as type is Python files. The file name, I'm gonna call, um, I'll call it rock, paper, scissors, right, dot py. Um, if you have a save as type as Python files, then, you don't, then the dot py is not necessary. Every file, every program, that you save as a file it has to have the file extension in Python as .py, .py for Python. So I hit save. <coughs> and now my computer's running. And if you look off to the right in the Python shell, it brings up, welcome to rock, paper, scissors, please enter. I'm gonna move this over so we can see the whole thing. Please enter to start, all right? So I have to hit the enter key. And then it says rock, paper, scissors. Uh, let's see, which one? Uh, why don't I enter something wrong? So how about, uh, 
I'll enter the word uh, help. And enter, ah, oh, this is not a valid choice. Please try again. All right, so now I'll enter something valid. I'm going to enter the word uh, rock. All right, uppercase. Your choice was rock, right? That's correct. Computer choice, that's random. So I, I don't know what the computer is going to choose, but in this case, it chose scissors. All right. Now, um, that's as far as we got, right? We don't have uh, a way to exit it, exit the game. We also don't have any logic, any conditional logic, which uh, determines who wins, right? Right? Because there's rules to this game. Uh, once again, rock beats scissors, scissors beats paper, and paper beats rock. All right, so let's move on to the next part of this program which is going to be, so, so far, everything's working perfectly. All right, so, this year. All right, so let's, uh, let's move on to our text editor. I'm gonna just move the uh, idle session over a little bit. All right, so now the next line. And let's say every this has to be indented. So after our print statement, now we have to indent. All right. So if here's where we're using our Python conditionals, right? So we'll start with an if statement. If user choice, right, which is the player's choice, user choice equals equals. Now when you're dealing with conditionals, you have to use not just an equal sign, but you have to do a double equal sign. So I do equal, equal, and here I'll do, um, if it equals lowercase rock, let's see. And then you have to end the conditional with a colon, just like we end our while loops with colons. Hit enter, it automatically indents inside the if conditional. So the user has rock. If, we'll do another if statement, Inside, it's a, called a nested if. So we have another if, if statement inside the first if statement. Now, if the CPU choice equal, equal, what? Uh, rock. Oops. And then colon to close it out. Hit enter. And we indent inside the nested if. Then we get a print. Print, print, C. It's a tie, right? Both the player and the computer chose rock. So it is, it's a tie. Exclamation point, double quotes. Now, the word it's in this print statement, I, I'm able to use a uh, single quote after the word IT, after the word it, and before the S, only because I'm surrounding the string with double quotes. If I was surrounding it with single quotes, I wouldn't be able to use this single quote right here. All right, so, and close it out with a parenthesis, hit enter. Now, that's for the first situation, right? But if the computer choose, so we're gonna do an elif, which uh, in Python is an else if, the CPU choice equal, equal scissors. You gotta spell it right, uh, close that with the parenthesis. And you have to end with a colon, hit enter. Then we're gonna print, Parenthesis, double quotes, uh, what? Um, I chose rock, they have scissors, I win. So it's gonna say, you win. You win, exclamation point, double quotes. All right, and then the final scenario, if I choose a rock, it's gonna be what? an else, right? Uh, 
Oh, that's the other thing. Um, remember, in the beginning of our program, way up here, we created two variables, user underscore wins and computer underscore wins. So um, after I print you win, I want to also have user underscore wins, right? And I want to increment this by one. Right now we initialize this variable to a, have a value of zero and to increment it by one, we do a plus equals one, all right? And that will add one to my total or to the player's total, all right? And then next, <coughs> next we're gonna have an else, all right? Because at this point, the only other, the only options that your computer can have are rock, scissors, or paper, all right? So else, encompasses, it has to be paper. So I don't need another L, uh, LF. So I can do else, and you have to end uh, any conditional with a colon. Hit enter, it automatically indents. And here I'm gonna do, hey, print, double quotes. So you win. And what should we say? I'm going to say computer wins. Estimation, double quotes, and close it out with a parenthesis. And then the other thing we have to do is we have to say, uh, what do we call it? I have to see what the variable name is up above. And we call it computer underscore wins. All right. So computer underscore wins equals uh, we'll increment it by one so plus equal one all right now all that is for if uh the player chooses rock right and then we go through the three different choices that the computer might have uh the same choice rocks it's a tie scissors and the player wins and computer the the, um, or uh, paper and the computer wins. So I'm going to put a little note here next to the if. Um, maybe over a little bit more. So I'll do a pound sign um, and we'll say uh, computer shows paper. All right. So now, next what we're going to have is, we're just going to copy all this information. All right. And because the next scenario is going to be, and you want to line this up underneath the, uh, the, the if statement, if user choice equals rock. All right, so now we're going to have, um, if the user chooses paper, okay? So we're not gonna use an if here, we're gonna use an elif. So the first if, the user chose rock. The second if, or elif in this case, the user choice is gonna be equal to paper, all right? So we copied that code from above where the user chose rock. So now we just have to change a few things. So, so the user chose paper, if the computer chooses rock, right, then what? Then um, you chose paper, computer chooses rock, so you're going to win. So I'm going to copy this information down here for a win. Uh, paste it there. And then um, I'll take this, this one out. So I'll cut it. All right, so the next one is, uh, I chose paper. The next one, the computer chose scissors. So that's for the computer to win. I'll put it to tie down here because um, the else is where the computer chooses paper. So it'll be a tie because I chose, or the player chose paper. And what I'll do is I'll cut this out. 
or not not the tie, but I'll cut the two lines below that. Computer wins and computer underscore wins uh, is incremented by two. And that is gonna go right here because scissors beats paper. All right, so. So for this LF, I, the player chooses paper. If the computer chooses rock, then the player wins. You win. User wins is incremented by one. L if the computer chooses scissors, now scissors beats paper. So the computer wins, and the computer underscore wins is incremented by one. And the final else is where the computer chooses paper. So paper and paper, you print it to tie. And you don't increment the two variables to uh, because neither neither the player or the computer won. All right. So now what we have is one more choice. All right. So I will copy this code. And I'll put it down here. And since we have our, our check way up here for the user to underscore choice, um, so it has to be valid. It has to be rock, paper, or scissors, all right? So we've done a conditional for when the user chose, the player chose rock, and we've done an initial where the player chose paper. So now here has to be an else. You should, you should use LF, LF user underscore choice um, equal to scissors, the final choice, but we don't, don't have to do that. So what I'm gonna do is, so what we'll do for the final, situation where the user is going to choose paper, we'll just make it an else instead of an LF. And I will add the comment. Uh, user chose scissors. All right. Just so uh, it's easier to keep track of. All right, so the user chose scissors and the first if is the computer shows rock. All right, so uh, let's see, scissor, rock beats scissors. So that's gonna be a loss. Um, so I will copy, I'm gonna cut this, all right? And I'll put it up here, I'll paste it up here. And computer wins, computer underscore wins variable is incremented by one, because he got another victory. All right, uh, the next scenario is, uh, let's see, they've chosen scissors, and the next one is computers chosen scissors. So I'm gonna cut this line down here, uh, cut it, and I'm gonna put it right here. Right, because that'll be a tie. Computer and the user both chose scissors. And then the final scenario is the computer chose paper and the user has scissors, so the user's gonna win. So what I'll do is I'll cut these two lines up here. And I will indent under the else and just paste it there. All right, so let's, let's double check. All right, so the user has chosen scissors. Computer chose rock, computer wins. Computer chose the scissors, it's a tie. Computer chose paper, and you win, and the user gets a, uh, a point. All right, so that is it for that. Now, uh, all right, so let's do a, um, let's do a print. Right, we'll do a line, a blank line. So print, printy, printy. Then we'll do print, print to see the quotes. 
and we'll say you had space double double quotes and then we'll do a plus str right str parentheses and then we're going to do user underscore wins the very we want to get the uh, value of the variable user underscore wins parentheses now they're using um, a plus sign or I was using a plus sign there. In Python, to concatenate things, you can use the plus, the plus sign or the comma. And I, I've always just used the comma. So um, the way this should read is, you want double quotes, you have space, double quotes. All right, you want that string. And then uh, concatenate it with a comma, and then space, and then string, user underscore wins, all right? So user underscore, wins is uh has a int integer value in it and we're going to convert that to a string so uh that's why we have the str before the uh, parentheses all right and then we'll do another comma and let's say what we'll do is uh All right, sorry, let me just get this set up. All right, so, um, so for our print line, we have comma, and then we're gonna have uh, in double quotes, right? Uh, oh, no, we'll just have wins, comma, and then double quotes, we'll have space wins double quotes and end parentheses all right so the print line will say you have five say user underscore wins has a value of five so i had five wins you have five wins and then uh hit enter and we'll do another print line print parentheses and double quotes will say computer I have to spell it right, computer has space, double quotes, comma for concatenation, space, str, double quotes, and CPU, what do we call it? Uh, no, computer wins. Computer underscore wins. Uh, and parentheses, comma for concatenation. And then double quotes, space, wins, double quotes, parentheses, and that's it. All right, and then we'll do another print line. Print, uh, print parentheses, parentheses, open and close parentheses, and that'll do another print line. All right, so that's, that's that. All right. Um, let's give it a try. All right, so come up to your toolbar in your idle session. Uh, look off to the left. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the uh, Python shell to the right a little bit uh, more visible. So I'll do I'll do run run module and click OK. We've already saved the file, and this will save it again. Oh, invalid syntax. All right. So and I click OK to to close out the drop down box, but it highlights in my code this closing parenthesis in red, which is giving me a clue as to what the problem is. So if you look at this line, it says LF, CPU underscore choice equal equal, and I'm missing an opening parenthesis before the double quote, scissors double quote. So I put one there, and it makes the closing parenthesis that was red, it makes that go away. So you know that I was able to correct the error. Uh, so let's do that again. So we go up to the toolbar in idle, click on run, and then run module, and then click OK. Un unindent does not match any outer indentation level. OK, so I click OK. Um, doesn't like this line. You can see where it highlights in red right after the colon. Um, oh, that's why. 
I'm missing another uh, opening parenthesis. And that's because we copied the code. So I, I was I, I made the mistake of not doing this opening parenthesis uh, for the if. And then we copied that code and, and popped it down here in the LF and the else. So I imagine my else right down here is wrong also. All right. So I put an op uh, opening parenthesis there too. Let's try it another time. Because I can't say it's going to be the last time. I click OK. Ah, oh, another error. Unindent does not match any outer indentation level. OK. So I click OK. And we'll come back up here. So equal, equal. Scissors. Um, equal, equal, scissors. All right, so let's go back up here. Doesn't seem to like it here. Oh, I see. I see what it is. All right, see, in the if, all right, the first if, where user choice equals right, I've got an if. And then LF and an else. And see how they're all lined up? The I and if, the E and LF, and the E and else. They all have to be indented the same way. Otherwise, it throws an error. So if you look down here in the LF, I've got if, the I is right here, but the LF is not indented correctly. And if you look over to the right in red, you know, the error is saying, hey, you didn't indent. The right way. So it's totally telling me exactly what's wrong with the program. And all I have to do is take LF, put my cursor before the E in LF, and hit uh, a single space. And that lines it up with the I in F and the E in else. And the same is true down here in the else logic. I just had to put my cursor behind the E, hit one space, and now this should all work fine. Let's see. All right, so off to the right in my Python shell it says, welcome to rock, paper, scissors. Please enter something, something. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this uh, Python shell over a little bit. Uh, enters, press enter to start. So I press enter to start. Rock, paper, scissors comes up. I'm gonna choose rock. Your choice rock, computer choice scissors which means I win, right? And I won. You have one win. Computer has zero wins. All right, so all that logic is working very nicely. All right, let's go. Back to our, uh, our um, idle session, because um, the code that we have to add is, we have to give the player an option to be able to play again or get out of the game, all right? So this is all within the while loop, all right? So it's all indented. So under the, the print statement, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say repeat space equals, and then we'll do an input statement. And I'm gonna make our idle session a little bit bigger. All right, so repeat equals input. And in parentheses, we're gonna say, play again, question mark. And then in parentheses, we'll say yes, or no. All right, so you're gonna enter yes or no. Oops, uh, no. And then space, we'll do a double quotes. Close out the uh, input statement with a closing parenthesis. And then we have to do, we don't have to, but uh, we'll do a dot lower. Remember, we're calling the method lower, and we're going to pass it no values. So we just uh, do an open and closing parentheses, empty parentheses. All right, so if the if the player enters a Y, a lowercase Y or an uppercase Y, lowercase N, uppercase N, it doesn't matter because with this dot lower, it's always going to be uh, the value of Y or N will always be lowercase, and uh, that it'll dump that value into repeat. All right, so next, we have to do a validation check, right? To make sure they entered either a Y or an N. So while repeat, the value of repeat is not in what? Uh, we'll do a, a square bracket, 
and we'll do double quote lowercase y parenthesis Well, oops, lowercase y, it has to be lowercase. Let's see, double quotes n. All right, so we're making a list and close it with a square bracket. Oops, square bracket, all right, good. And let's say the while loop has to end with a colon. Hit enter and inside the while loop, it'll say, okay, the variable repeat equals input and double quotes, and we'll say that is not a valid choice. Please try again. Let's try, we'll do a colon here, base and double quotes, closing parenthesis, dot lower, because remember, you only want them, you want them to enter a valid choice is Y or N, but whether they enter it upper or lowercase, it's going to be converted to lowercase, all right? Because that's what we're checking for, a lowercase Y or a lowercase N. And hit enter, and that will check for whether they chose Y or N, and whether they want to repeat the game or not, okay? So what we need is, outside of the while loop, what we need is a, a little conditional that says if repeat equal equal. Remember uh, with conditionals, if, elif, and else, you have to use equal equal to equal signs. If it's no, then we want to break. All right? And then we'll do a print. Oops. Outside of the if, we'll do a print. This is our last line of code for this game. So print double quotes, and we'll do um, uh, slash n, and we'll do we'll do a bunch of these, and we'll do forward slash n. And we'll do double quotes and print. All right, so that's our print statement at the very bottom. Because if they don't want to break, <clears throat> then we're going to go all the way back up to the, the original while. And it'll still be true. So it'll do this whole process again to allow the player to play again. Now, if they choose no, then we're checking for that in this conditional. If repeat equal equals no lowercase null, then we're going to do break. And break is a command in Python that will break us out of the program. All right, it'll end the program. All right, so let's uh, let's give this a try. I'm going to move my test editor over a bit. All right, so the way to run a program is run, run module, click OK to save it. Oh, I got an error. Ah. I forgot, after every conditional, after every while or for loop in Python, you have to end it with a colon. And you can see the error is highlighted right here in red. So I make a colon and the red highlight disappears. So I know I corrected it. Up in the toolbar, I'll do run, run module. Click OK and uh, what happened? Uh, let's see. I'm going to come over here and do my uh, idle screen. <clears throat> and why don't we do this one again? And I, uh, right again. All right. And I hit enter to start it. And this time I'll do paper. Uh, what happened? I chose paper, computer chose scissors, computer wins. You have zero wins, computer has one win. Mm hmm. All right. Let's see. Oh, that's right. We're starting a brand new game. Okay. So now. 
Now what happens? Um, I have one win. Okay, so what should happen is I should say yes. All right. All right, so here's repeat, input, play again. So play again should come up, all right? I'm not sure that's coming up. Right, so let's let's start all over. Let's do a run, run module. All right, so we're doing a brand new game. I hit enter. I just can't see it. Okay, so I hit enter. All right, here we are. Okay, so first time through, I'll say rock. I do rock, he does paper, computer wins, right? And computer gets one win. Then it says play again, yes or no? I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say E. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's a, that's not a valid choice. Please try again, all right? So the only valid choices are Y or N. And uh, so I say, yeah, I want to play again. Oh. Not a valid choice. All right, so. I found out what was wrong with my code. Um, well, we're doing the validation, we're checking to see if the, the repeat is a Y or an N. Um, uh, the first value I put in was the letter E, so we knew it wasn't valid, right? So it comes down inside the while, down to this line, and it says, all right, um, that's not a valid choice, please try again, and dot lower. So whatever choice I enter, a Y or an N is gonna be lowercase. Um, but the problem is, I, I called the method lower, but I didn't um, I didn't put a opening and closing parenthesis. So um, that's what was missing. And that's why it was never uh, it was never doing lower. And uh, even though I, then the next time through I entered a Y for yes, I want to repeat the game. It um, it just uh, it uh, didn't understand this dot lower without the opening and closing parentheses. So I've added that and let me uh, move this over here. And I'll do run run module real fast. Click okay. And there we go. All right, so hit enter to start. I do. I'll start with rock. I had rock, they have scissors, I win, and I get a point. Play again, yes. Rock, paper, scissors, all right. Now I'll try paper. Uh, I chose paper, computer chose rock. You win. All right, now I have two wins. See how it's telling my score. I have two wins, computer still has none. Uh, I say yes. And this time I'll do scissors. Oh, three wins. I have scissors, computer shows paper randomly. I win, I have three wins. Let's see if we can get the uh, computer to do something else. I'll do rock. Ah, I lost that one. Oh no, it's a tie. I chose rock, he chose uh, rock. It's a tie, I have three wins. Computer still has none, so I'm pretty awesome. So um, now I'm done with the game. So I'm gonna hit N for no, or N for to break out of the game, to exit the game. So hit N, and boom. Uh, after I hit N, it goes down to, um, in the Python shell in Python, uh, three greater than signs means you're back at the prompt. So that, that meant that we closed out the game and we exited cleanly. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this. This tutorial on how to uh, use uh, some uh, fundamental Python concepts to to build a rock paper scissors game. 
And um, thanks for joining me. My, once again, my name is Scott Barto, and this class was generously offered to you by the Fitzsimmons Park Half Moon Library. Thanks again, and have a good night.